Hey guys, hi. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. Uh, today is day two of six days off in a row. I've spent all day yesterday at home and most of the day today. It's two, it's almost three o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know why. I've just been so wiped out and worn down. I got a, a cold sore. I know. I'm so close to perfect, right? Uh, so it's my body saying, Steven, you really need to relax or get out, get some fresh air, go for a walk, you know? So I uh, went out to Red Rock last week, I think. I might drive out there again just to walk around a little bit. I know it's almost three o'clock in the afternoon. The sun sets in just a few hours, but it might be nice just to walk around in the gloaming, you know, sort of the, the, the late afternoon. Or I might take a walk around Sunset Park, which I have driven past, but didn't really recognize how big and diverse that park really is. And it's just down the street for me. So I'm going to go check that out. I did buy some um, hiking boots, shoes, whatever. Let me show you. All right. So that's, those are them. These are all cat toys and things that cats like to chew on. I apologize for the mess. But those are the boots, the shoes. They're like really grippy, grippy. Look at my calves. Urgh! I'm like the Hulk. But um, they're, they're, um, they're not that bad looking. Sorry for the angle. And you can see they're pretty, pretty serious. They're pretty serious when it comes to like grippy. You know, they're super comfortable. They're by a company called Bass, B-A-S-S. -S. I think I had, I owned a pair of Bass loafers back about a thousand years ago in 1987. But um, they were 30 bucks at Marshall's. They're 60 online, so eh, I bought them. We'll check them out. I am going to head out before it gets too late. I will see you outside. All right, so I'm back at Red Rock, uh, but this time I'm not wearing Crocs. I'm wearing my little, ta-da, my little hiking shoes. So the goal today is just to kind of walk around Red Rock a little bit and then maybe head out to one of the canyons before it gets dark. I mean, it's sun's going to probably set in about two hours. So just a chance to walk around, have a great time. The weather's perfect. The only fly in the ointment is, of course, my little cold sore, but whatever. Maybe the sun will help. So uh, let's go for a walk. All right. My goal this evening is to head down there through that little canyon there. I just came from up there i tell you it doesn't look like much but <laughs> thank god i have these little these little shoes on um i'm trying to find the, there's a guy up there rock climbing let's see can you see him he's right where is he he's right there a little teeny teeny person sam oh there he is <laughs> That just gives you an idea of how massive this rock is. Do you see them? There's a bunch of quail. Do you see them? Oh, they're adorable. Oh, no, I want a quail. I think they were quail. They look like quail, but I can't get Google out here in the desert so i think there were quail found this little cave here look at how the stone has like polka dots all over it ah oh, gosh what a beautiful day i'm gonna head down that way all right so we just climb from up there down here, well, that doesn't look like much. I felt like I was Spider-Man because I had to use like my hands and my feet. And I get down here and I find this little ravine here. And look at this, look how cool. This is like a, where the, like the occasional rainfall. Ooh, see how it, it's formed this chute down here. Crazy. This must have taken thousands and thousands of years to do that. <coughs> <sighs> it's going to take me a long time to get back up to the car. Mm -hmm. You should see me, guys. I feel so, I feel so athletic walking through these little rocks here. Oh, my gosh. 
All right, I'm gonna walk for a couple more minutes. Then I head back because while going down has been easy, going up is gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> I do feel a little bit like a mountain goat. Let's go down there and then we'll turn around. I'll tell you, I do kind of understand the desire to make a mark, like graffiti, that kind of thing. Let me see if I can. I do understand graffiti a little bit because, like, you know, you're in places like this and you say to yourself, like, I want the world to know I was here, you know? And, well, that's why I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> but look how pretty. All right. I'm tempted to continue, but I'm already <laughs> winded. And my walk back up that way is going to take a while. So, so great. I'm so glad I bought these damn shoes. 30 bucks. What a deal. What a deal. All right, you can see two of the rock climbers. One's on the ground, and one's up there somewhere. You can, you can see them right there. I'd rather jump out of a plane than fall down a pile of rocks like this. Um, I'll tell you, I worry about the surface of the rocks. I know that it's vast, but you're able to crumble this stone with your fingertips. It's very soft, very uh, friable. So I imagine what all the, the hammering of those pinions or whatever they're called to allow you to climb down. I imagine what collectively over the course of, you know, years and years, what all that pounding and those little holes do to the surface of the stone. Just a thought. <laughs> so I just did a little reading in one of the plaques here. Now I knew this was a sand dune at one point, uh, but 180 million years ago, these were sand dunes and where all the red is, they were all covered in iron, all the little grains of sand. So, you know, now that they're exposed to air, they turn into like rust, you know, iron oxide. But uh, I was looking in the calico bits, see the different lines and different stripes, different colors. The little plaque I just read talks about how all of this was sand, of course, at one point. But the lines are not from the, the, the stone moving. It was actually each teeny microscopic layer upon layer of sand as the different currents in the water and the wind shifted the sands and they sort of petrified or became sort of, you know, sandstone in those positions. 180 million years ago, this was a beach, <laughs> basically. Isn't that wild? Before the dinosaurs became extinct, this was like rolling sand. I think that's wild. This is one of the reasons I wanted to come out at this time of day. Look how beautiful this is, right? And it's about 20 minutes outside of the city. Amazing. And the whole character of the stone is different at nighttime or in the evening. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful time of day here. I can't believe how teeny, you can't see them from here. There's people standing up there, little tiny people up there. Can you see them right in the middle? Yeah, I wanna come up here and climb up there sometime soon. Oh my gosh, I am so out of shape and here i was telling you earlier my body is telling me stephen like calm down take a nap rest relax well here i am <laughs> climbing but look look isn't that gorgeous let's see what it looks like without me in the picture it's better all right let's see look at that <sighs> wow. Crazy. All right, it is 544 in the evening, and I am probably a good 20 minutes away from my car right now. So I'm going to head back. I just met this great young lady. She had this adorable little dog in a carrier, like a papoose. 
she took him out for, so he could walk around. The poor little thing was like this real scruffy terrier with this like snaggle tooth little face and three legs. <laughs> and he's running around, hopping around, having a great time. And I, I said, oh my God, you have the best dog. And she says, yeah, I mean, he's, he's so full of life. I say, you can tell as he's hopping around like he is in those three legs. And she said, he runs around more now than he did when he had four legs because he had bone cancer and they had, you know, his leg, they kept trying to save his leg. And finally they said, you know, they couldn't save it. So they took it off and he was running around the next day. What a great little dog. He's a, a good example of a, you know, strong spirit. All right, let's get back to my car. It's hard to talk and not wheeze at the same time. <laughs> See you back at the car. All right, I just saw this really cool tree while on the way back to the car. And I was like, wow, that tree is so cool. And I happened to glimpse through some branches at like what the tree's growing out of. Look at the pattern of the stone, how it's been broken up. Look where that tree is growing out of the stone. How cool is that? Like, like, like nature finds a way to survive, right? Look at that. That's so cool. And if that damn tree can find a way to survive, if not thrive, in the desert growing out of rocks, what can I do in my life? Right? But I, I'm kind of like that tree. I've I got some rocks, rocks in my past. I've grown around and through, but still, great inspiration. <gasps> Look at this. Look at this view. I know I keep showing the same damn thing, but every minute, the colors change, and it's so beautiful. Imagine me not talking. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be even more beautiful in silence. <laughs> Hey there, look at this, right? So I'm filming this sunset thinking, oh my God, this is so beautiful, so pristine, no mark of humanity. And then this guy pops up on top of the rock and he starts like jamming to music on his phone. He was just, a minute ago, he was just dancing and singing. And I'm like, oh man, he just ruined my picture. And then I'm thinking, well, he's having a great time. Go, you know, dance, dance like no one's looking, even though I'm filming you. <laughs> but look at that, right? Look at that. So great. All right. This is my last stop uh, at Red Rock today. Uh, it's much darker out than it looks. My camera is showing it as being much, much brighter. But uh, if you look over to the left, you'll see actually Las Vegas down there in the valley. And on the left right there, that's Red Rock. And that's Turtle Head or Turtle something peak up there. All right. Now that it's dark and getting cold it's time to go home hey good afternoon guys hi so it is 3 23 in the afternoon on november 3rd lots of threes there i'm about to head over to sunset park uh now i've just spent most of the day in the house with the cats they were being so loving and lovable buddy literally crawled in bed with me up to my my chest here put his head on the edge of my pillow and let me sleep with my arm around him. I mean, if you remember when Buddy joined my little family, that wasn't my cat. Like, Buddy is just so different. And uh, Claire was just loving as usual. Eleanor was being sweet. So I just had a hard time leaving the house today, honestly. Uh, but I figured, again, the weather is so beautiful this time of year. It's time to head out. So I'm going to hit this park. Um, I drive by Sunset Park pretty much every time I leave the house uh, it's but I always mistook it for other parks multiple parks because each part is so different oh one side is a plane going by and it's so loud one sec all right so I always mistake this park for being multiple parks because some parts are like desert landscapes some just look like traditional little parks where you bring your family uh, and it's all very very different so I figured I'm gonna explore that park it's huge uh, so I figured I'd film a little bit, see what if it's cool enough to share with you. And if it is, well, it'll be in the video. If it's not, well, you won't be seeing this. <laughs> so I will see you at the park.
Very interesting memorial. It's beautiful. Uh, and it's to, um, in honor of the one and a half million victims of the Armenian Genocide, 1915 through 1923. It's beautiful. This place is enormous. I've been walking for about 20 minutes and see that little pavilion over there? That's where the uh, playground is where I part. Walked all the way around here and there's just acres and acres of this grass that I typically associate with wetlands. And apparently there's like this little spring or a little teeny, I think they call it a lake or something. It's not, it's a wet spot, but it's all like marshlands in the desert where we've had a 20 year drought. I think it's very interesting. And you can see how close we are to the airport because there's a plane coming right over here. It's Frontier, high Frontier. All right, while it's not Red Rock, <laughs> it's still a beautiful space. It's a beautiful space and it's vast. Uh, this is a little brackish stream there's actually little teeny tiny fish in there. I mistook them for tadpoles, but I can see that they're fish. I'm not quite sure where they end up, but uh, there is a lake, Las Vegas, so maybe that's where they end up. But yeah, I'm just gonna walk around. I'm glad I'm wearing sunscreen, I'll tell you that. And this is the beginning of November. I can't imagine this place in July, but uh, whew, it's bright. Let me hide under this shrub. Um, I need to buy a bicycle. I need to go to Walmart or something and buy an inexpensive bicycle because there are just so many places to bike around here. This park, I've just like scratched the surface of it. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, and it's perfectly set up as you can see for bicycling. So a bike is in my near future. Near future. I'm going to pay off some of my credit cards first, but near future. See those little birds over there? There's a whole bunch of them. There's a ton over here, but they are quail. I thought I saw quail yesterday at Red Rock, but Google wasn't helping me out. But I saw their little feathers up on top of their head. They're quail. They're so adorable. They're all over the place. And do you see the bunny rabbit? Right there. Where is he? See him? Right there. Bye. <laughs> Okay, look at the pigeons, but look at the lake behind the pigeons. Can you believe this? This, all of this was about two miles away from where I used to live for like three years. How did I not know this existed here? There's people fishing, there's fishing poles all around here. This guy's got a real big professional setup. And look at the geese. Look at the geese in the playground over there. I gotta find out from these guys what kind of fish they catch in this little lake. But I can't believe this. This looks like Florida. Look at that little bird. I don't know what it is. It's got a very strange bill. We got some white ducks here. And this gentleman behind me just told me that he catches catfish, big catfish, carp, bluegill, and something else in the waters here. How did I not know this existed? Not that I fish, I don't eat seafood. But I just, I'm fascinated. Look at the number of ducks. Can you see them? They're all, they're all over. There's hundreds of ducks and geese. Oh, I'm so pleased. Look at the way these ducks walk. Look at them. They're like little people. Oh my God, they're so cute. So cute. Now I want a duck. What's really interesting around almost every tree is some little um, memorial of some kind. And you can see them over around most trees. Some seem to be for pets and then some seem to be for people. But I mean, they look real like permanent. You can see these plaques. Look at this. It is, yeah, this is for two, two people. I certainly hope this isn't a grave of some sort, but, and they have a, a memory of my mother. Oh my gosh. Like what's going on? Is this something you can pay to have a memorial site? 
I really hope they're not graves. I don't mind graveyards. I love graveyards. I find them very peaceful to walk around in. I learned how to drive in a cemetery. My grandfather taught me how to drive. He said that everyone in the cemetery was already dead, so I didn't have to worry about hurting anybody with my driving. Yeah, but um, yeah, is this like a park slash cemetery? Weird. See, they're all over the place. I'm gonna check out this little island and then I'm gonna walk around and back to my car because as pretty as this is, the water has a very distinct smell to it that's kind of unpleasant. It's probably a whole bunch of duck poop is what it probably is, but there's a little island out there. It's all man-made. Isn't that wild? Right in the middle of Las Vegas. And some absolute jerk is racing is racing that boat around terrifying every bird within half the lake what a jerk people are jerks so I just googled these memorials around uh, the park here and I found a couple sites one of which is kind of gruesome in that you can actually pay to have your your or a loved one's remains placed below a tree gruesome uh, in a park like that I don't know uh, and or less you know more benign you can have uh, a tree uh, as a memorial instead of having someone's ashes buried under the tree that is my bedroom window and that is the beautiful Claire. Claire Bear. Claire Bear. Uh, I don't think I can compete with pigeons. <gasps> Hi. Yes, you. Hi, Claire Bear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big stretch with that paw, huh? Hi, Claire Bear. That's her favorite, favorite spot is up high in that window. Yes, buddy, I know, I hear you. I'm talking about Claire. Hey guys, hi, welcome to Thursday, November 4th. It's 12.22 in the afternoon. It's 75 degrees, it's dry, as you'd guess, it's the desert. Uh, there's a bit of a breeze, it's perfect to be outside. Uh, so I figured, you know what, in the theme of getting to know the town I live in, finally, after four and a half years, um, like yesterday, there's a lake man-made, full of duck poo, but it's a lake, um, two miles from my house, right? Um, but, uh, so I figured I'm going to hop in the car again today and see what I find. And I came out to the Clark County Wetlands Preserve, Reserve something, uh, and I figured let's just go for a drive, check the city out. Um, I noticed also the, a big sign saying no bikes and no dogs. Uh, I'm reconsidering my position on buying a bicycle. I stopped by Walmart yesterday. They had a, a bike that I would like, but it was almost $400 at Walmart. And uh, plus, you know, all the other stuff that you have to have, the helmet, the lights, the pump, the ba ba ba. And to, I'd, I'd drive it, I would ride it maybe three or four times a month max. So guess what? Walking is free uh, and also healthy. Rather than talk to you on the phone, let's just go out for a walk around the, the wetlands and hope there's no mosquitoes. Ugh, I hate mosquitoes. I'll see you outside. I came to the visitor center, which looks like pretty significant. It's a pretty sizable building here. Let's find out what's inside. Hey, how are you? Well, the guy at the visitor center was lovely. Very, very nice guy. Gave me lots of pamphlets and maps and things. And uh, this place is vast. Apparently it goes right out to the desert. Uh, but let's see, here's a little panoramic view. But you can see the city is way out there, but this preserve goes way, way out there. And I'm really looking forward to going out there. But this is a really substantial visitor center and there's nobody here it's so strange 
here's a little play area where you can, your little ones can sit on a frog or a ducky or a dragonfly or they can look at the snake and see how there's a mouse inside this snake. <gasps> how morbid. I'm sure the parents like, oh, don't worry, honey. He's just sleeping. He's not being digested. No. All right, so that's the preserve. That's where I am right now. But all of this, this whole section, you can actually go hiking and walking through. There's paths and trails all throughout there. And then there's the desert, of course. How cool. All right, I feel like I'm on the yellow brick road. What will I find? You remember that little duck I saw yesterday with a black body and white bill? There's another one right there. He's super cute. I gotta Google him and find out what he is. It's a little creepy out here, honestly. It's a nature preserve, so there's, you'd imagine, there's lots of little animals and birds and, oh, there's a humming. Do you see it? Look at the hummingbird. How close can I get? <gasps> oh, I love hummingbirds. Everywhere you go, there's an animal or a bird or... It's crazy. That hummingbird is so beautiful. They're all over Las Vegas. All right, so I was just... Uh, walked off the path, the paved path. There's lots and lots of little dirt paths as well, but I found this. Uh, Vern's Pond. There you go. And the water is a very interesting color green, which is reminds me a lot of the water in Central Park Lake, actually, in August. So it's not that unusual, I guess. But how pretty is that? And it's a pond in the desert craziness. There's a quaint little bridge and then after the bridge there's desert. It's crazy to hear running water behind me and then to look out at the desert here. I see some bicyclists out there like riding mountain bikes and stuff. I thought I saw a, a motorbike out there because they're moving so fast but I don't hear any engines. But uh, maybe I'll reconsider a bike one day. But for now Walking is free. It's a beautiful day. I hear running water. Oh, look! Ooh, how cool is that? All right, let me pause while I get down here. <laughs> All right, I got down. <laughs> look! Wow! It's practically white water. Cool. Look at that in the desert. All right, this is called the Las Vegas Wash, apparently. This little stream, river kind of thing. I think that's Henderson out that way. I'm not quite sure. I think that's Henderson. And from what I understand, this flows out towards Lake Mead. Come on, make that noise again. Where are you? You know those little black birds I saw yesterday with the white bills? I thought they were adorable for some reason, but I, I just saw a bunch more here. And apparently they're called American Coots, C-O-O-T-S like an old man, an old coot. The sound that they made here was, it sounded like a quiet fart, like a hum, hum. I can't make the noise. It sounded like a quiet fart, followed by a bleep, like a high bleep. It's so funny, like a fart and then a bleep. Uh, so I'm wondering, do they call old men old coots because they make little farting sounds all the time? I don't know, could be, maybe. That sign says you're entering a desert area. Seven miles to the next bridge. No water, 
no shade, no road access. Okay, that sounds welcoming. I am gonna walk a few minutes out that way, but I have no water and I'm getting kind of sweaty. So I'm not gonna go too far because I still have quite a walk that way. All right, I have seen quite a bit of desert landscape over the past couple of days. There's a plane right there going into McCarran. And, uh, oof. Now, I'm parked way over there on the other side of the preserve. Um, um, you probably can't see here. You probably still can't see. Eh, you can see the strip from here. If you look close, you'll see the Luxor. And the stratosphere is way over there. I've seen similar growths from a distance on some trees, but this is a parasitic plant, and I think it's actually mistletoe. See those little white berries? The leaves are gone, but I think that's actually mistletoe of all things. I didn't know it grew out here in the desert. Guys, look, wait, wait. Do you see that bird? It's a roadrunner. Can you see him? Wait. I wish I could get a better look. He's a road runner. I just saw him run across the parking lot to catch something. Am I even, is he even in camera? <sighs> look, look at him. It's a road runner. I am so excited. Isn't that wild? A real live road runner. I just can't believe it. I know it's the desert. And this is a wilderness preserve, but it's Las Vegas and it's in a parking lot. I just didn't expect to see a roadrunner, you know. Um, I was sitting over there when I saw it. And I'll tell you about that in a minute, why I moved. Uh, it's kind of amusing. Um, but uh, I just, out of the corner of my eye, I saw like this flicker. And it stopped. It was like an arrow. I have to Google and see how fast roadrunners can go. But it stopped right in front of my car and it caught whatever it was going after. It went pop, pop, and then it took off again uh but um yeah it was a a, a road runner <sighs> craziness um so this has been a really great couple of days i know i wanted to rest and i did i slept a lot like i slept at night really really well um but um it's felt really sort of rejuvenating to do all the walking and light hiking <laughs> that i did over at red rock uh, i've been to red rock a number of times and i filmed twice. I think I've filmed two of my visits to Red Rock, but I wanted to go back with the right shoes, you know, because the right shoes are everything. Right, girls? All right. Um, but uh, just had a wonderful time at Red Rock. Just seeing some sights and seeing the sunset was lovely. Um, maybe one day I'll go back and visit where I buried Aurora. That'd be nice. Uh, and then yesterday, um, exploring Sunset Park, which was really wild. The fact that all of that was just like two three miles away from my house mind-blowing uh that all that water is right here in las vegas in the desert uh and then today i was thinking of going over to there's another kind of reserve or a sp something called the springs something desert springs or something uh but they wanted tickets you had to get tickets ahead of time and I didn't have tickets ahead of time. So I remembered on the um, MLS app, when you're looking to buy a house, uh, you can see, see a map of the area. Well, I kept seeing these um, wetlands, the wetland preserve out here on the edge of Las Vegas. I kept seeing that and I thought, well, I'll go out there one day. And this morning I thought, well, let's go out to the wetlands. You know, it's free. So I drove out here and boy, was it worth it. Um, I've only probably walked about a third of the wilderness preserve because I didn't bring any water with me. Uh, if I had brought some water, I probably would have would have done the whole walk. But uh, there's a real long, nice meandering walk around the nature preserves. Plus, there's all sorts of like dirt paths and things like that. And then further out there, I walked right to the edge of the desert. And I thought that'd be a nice little bike ride out there. Um, it was really peaceful. And I left just in time because probably I'd say about 20 minutes, a half hour after I left, I could, I could hear dirt bikes uh, in the background, and that noise is just so irritating to me. It's kind of like the sound of that that mo that um, mo that uh, model boat that that guy was driving around the lake yesterday. It's really irritating. Um, 
But uh, so I'll come back here uh, a number of times. I probably won't film it every time because it's not that exciting. But um, yeah, it was it really wonderful to sort of get to know Las Vegas that doesn't involve the strip, you know. Um, so I hope you enjoyed seeing some of uh, the nature around Las Vegas. Um, maybe I'll film if I go to other sites. I'll I'll film I'll film those when I go. But until then, I'm gonna head out find something to drink nibble on and then go home and love my cats because buddy seems awfully needy lately claire seems really sort of in a malaise she's been very like droopy lately i don't know what's going on and eleanor is as mischievous as eleanor always is but i miss my cats <laughs> i've been away for so long on my days off that i miss my cats so i'm gonna go see them until then uh the next video i will see you later have a great day and of course fly safe